Okay, so let us continue our discussion on simple pendulum. Okay. So in the previous class, uh, we learned how to develop the equation of motion for this uh, pendulum. So it has a bob and which is suspended by a spring of length L. So it has a weight mg acting downward and then What we do, we allow uh, the bob to move in this circular path and then uh, so uh, initial displacement of theta is given and then the bob is released. So now today we are going to revisit the energy and we will see how we can use that information also to cast the equation of motion. Because for any uh, vibration analysis, the first task we have to carry out is to develop the equation of motion. So in this case, what we have is the string length L and obviously this will be L cos theta which is from the top to this horizontal line and obviously this part is L into 1 minus cos theta. Now, the total energy E total will have two components, kinetic energy and then potential energy. Now, so this uh, displacement in the lateral direction, so this is x, obviously x is equal to L sin theta. So if we write down the expression for kinetic and potential energy, so what we have half mass and then um, we have velocity, so it is L times d theta dt <coughs> that is whole square plus m g and um, from this equilibrium position actually uh, this bob is lifted by an amount L into 1 minus cos theta. So, mgh is the potential energy. So, in this case L into 1 minus cos theta. Now, <coughs> that is the combination of kinetic and potential energy. Obviously, in this system as of now there is no non-conservative force. What does it mean? If you have a pendulum, simple pendulum, then if you apply a displacement and then allow it to, <coughs> excuse me, vibrate or uh, experience some kind of motion, then what will happen? If you observe the pendulum, you will see after some time, it will come to rest or what we call the mean or equilibrium position. Why that happens? That is because there is a damping. When the pendulum uh, moves, it actually experiences friction with the uh, surrounding air and that helps to dissipate a part of the energy and at a, as it moves with time, because of this energy dissipation, the total energy is reduced and then obviously it comes to ultimately rest. Now, for the time being, we are not considering that type of force that we call a damping force as we progress in this course. We will see how we can model that damping force, but as of now, we have no such force. So, 
total energy in this case remains constant. So, if it is constant obviously, if I differentiate total energy with respect to time, this will be equal to 0. And if that is the case, then uh, obviously, we expect to use this information to develop the equation of motion. So, let us see how we do that. So, the first term if we differentiate with respect to t, so we will have m half of m and then twice L actually it will be L square and then uh, d theta dt times d 2 theta d t 2 plus for this second term it will be m g L then sin theta d theta dt is equal to 0. Now, if that is the case, then we can cancel this 2 and then m l d theta dt, if we take common, then what we have inside is d 2 theta d t 2 plus, so there will be l here plus g sin theta is equal to 0. Now, if we apply the assumption of small theta, then obviously sin theta will be approximately equal to theta. And if we apply that approximation, we can further modify this and we have instead of g sin theta, we have g theta. Now, if you look at this expression, obviously, this part cannot be 0. So, the equation that we are looking at is, this is the equation we are looking at g theta and then what we have d 2 theta d t 2 plus g by L times theta is equal to 0. So, what we have here, if you recall, this is nothing but the omega square and uh, t is equal to 2 pi by omega, where omega is equal to square root of g by L. So, what we have the time period is equal to 2 pi square root of L by G. This is what we derived in the last lecture. Now, this analysis tells us how we can develop the equation of motion. Now, we have uh, studied two different approach. Yesterday, we used the free body diagram and then we identified the force and that force we balanced with uh, mass times acceleration, but today we use the concept of total energy and for this system the energy conservation is uh, satisfied because there is no non-conservative force and because of that if we follow this uh, model then we can also derive the equation of motion. Obviously, the second step what we have is how to solve this equation of motion. So, let us quickly see and then uh, further we will move forward, we will take some example. So, we have this is the equation of motion and then what we do? We have the pendulum. So, we apply this theta at t equal to 0. So, at that point, um, when we apply a theta, at that point obviously, velocity is 0 and then uh, we release the pendulum. So, d theta d t at t is equal to 0 is 0 and theta at t equal to 0 is equal to theta naught. So, this is the condition. Uh, that we are going to apply 
and then obviously we have the assumption of small theta. Now, if that is the case, uh, theta of t is actually theta naught cos uh, omega t, right? And then obviously this is equal to theta naught cos two pi by capital T times T and we have already derived what is T. T is nothing but uh, if you recall 2 pi square root of L by G. So, 2 pi by T is square root of G by L. Then uh, what we have here theta naught cos square root of g by l t. Now, so at theta uh, t 1 is equal to 0. What does it mean? So, we have this pendulum then at t equal to 0, we apply theta and then we release it and it takes, it actually travels this path and it takes t 1 time to come from this extreme position to mean position, right. Obviously, in that case, theta t 1 will be equal to 0. So, if that is the case, then what we have here theta t 1 is equal to 0 is equal to theta naught cos square root of g by L t 1, which indicates square root of g by L t 1 is equal to pi And then uh, we can find out what is t 1 is equal to pi by 2 square root of L by G. Now, at this instant, we can also find out what is angular velocity say w z of t 1, this is nothing but d theta d t at t equal to t 1. So, what is the first differential of uh, theta with respect to t? We have the expression for theta. So, what we get is minus we have uh, theta naught then uh, square root of g by L sin square root of g by L one. Now, this is actually let me just modify this. So, this is our w z t 1 is equal to minus. So, w z t 1 is equal to minus theta naught square root of g by L. Now, sin of this quantity is we have already found out this is pi by 2. So, what we have w z t 1 is equal to minus theta naught square root of g by L. Now, one thing you might have noticed that there is a negative sign here, right. Why this negative sign is here? Just remember, we applied a initial displacement in this direction. However, the bob actually moves in this direction and that indicates that there is a theta, which is having a negative sign here. Now, 
if we calculate what is the energy when we release this pendulum obviously we can easily write it is mg l into 1 minus cos theta naught simply because at that point at this location velocity is 0. So, what we have here is uh, only the potential energy and you can actually simplify this. So, this is approximately equal to half m g uh, l cos square theta naught. So, this 1 minus cos theta you can actually simplify and you get this expression. Now, if we move further, so when the bob is at the bottom, uh, then uh, at this point, then we will only have kinetic energy, right. So, if that is the case, then uh, there E is equal to kinetic energy, which is half then m we have b square. Now, this is equal to what? This is equal to what we have already derived m g l half of that into theta naught square. So, we have the pendulum which is given an initial displacement of theta and then released obviously in T1 time it will come to this point. So, it will take T1 and initially at this point at the extreme point where we release the pendulum we have the potential energy which is marked here. So, that potential energy will be completely converted into kinetic energy at the equilibrium position or mean position. Now, obviously, in that case V, we can uh, find out. So, we can cancel half m. So, we are left with theta naught square root of G L. Now, at this point again, <coughs> we can also calculate angular velocity. So, it is d theta dt at t is equal to t1. So, that you can show that it is v by l and in this case we already know what is v. So, we have plus minus square root of g by l theta naught. Why there is a plus minus? The reason is the bob moves both way. So, it will go this way and then finally, again come back. So, the uh, direction obviously changes from positive to negative and then negative to positive and that is the reason we have this uh, plus minus sign. Now, <coughs> in this uh, example what we have used is uh, energy principle and then using that we have derived the equation of motion. So, let us take an example a different example and see how we can utilize this information. So, what we have here is a spring and then it is attached to a mass which is actually moving over a plane and for the time being let us consider that there is no friction between this block and the surface over which it moves. Now, obviously, in this case uh, our task is to derive the equation of motion and for that we will use energy principle. So, total energy in this case again we have two components. So, first term we can easily write half m v square that is the kinetic energy and then uh, we have the potential energy for that let us mark. So, the uh, mass moves in the horizontal direction by an amount of x at time t. So, the potential energy is half k x square. Now, again in this case there is no 
conservative non conservative force sorry acting and then uh, we can differentiate total energy with respect to time and because it is constant there is no non conservative force or damping force then this term will be equal to 0. So, what we have is half mass times we have 2 V and then <coughs> dV dt plus half k 2 x dx dt is equal to 0. Obviously, this half and this one in the second term gets cancelled. So, what we are left with is V dV dt plus k x dx dt. Obviously, we know what is velocity, velocity is dx dt and if we differentiate velocity with time, so that we can uh, write in terms of displacement also, it is the second derivative of the displacement x of t. Now, if you use that information, so what we have here, this term we can modify with v and this is equal to 0. Obviously, what we have is v and then in place of dv dt, we can write d 2 x dt 2 plus, so there is a mass, sorry, I missed it. So, there will be mass m plus k times x is equal to 0. Now, again in this case, we have the equation of motion m d 2 x d t 2 plus k x is equal to 0. The reason is uh, that is the condition we are trying to solve to get this displacement field v is uh, obviously this uh, v not equal to 0 that is what not we are looking at. So, what we have here is d 2 x d t 2 plus k by m times x is equal to 0. And in this case again, we can consider omega square is equal to k by m. So, we can modify this equation as omega x square. So, this is the equation of motion we have for a mass which is attached to a spring of constant k. So, this is the equation of motion. Now, what we have done in this case, we just consider the total energy and then we differentiate that with respect to time and because the total energy is constant, obviously that provides us the necessary condition that we need to satisfy in this case. This is the equation we need to uh, solve to study the dynamic equilibrium of the body. Now, if I modify this example slightly, so what we have is again the same spring and then in this case we do not have a mass, but a wheel right. Let me redraw it. So, what we have is a wheel which is connected to this mass and this wheel actually rotates while it also moves over the surface. So, this uh, center it actually moves and then there is a rotation of the wheel also. Now, again there is uh, no um, friction and this wheel does not slip over the surface. So, in that case again what we have is total energy is equal to summation of kinetic energy plus potential energy. So, in this case again half m v square 
प्लस हाफ के एक्स स्क्वायर दैट्स व्हाट वी हैड अर्लियर बट इन दिस केस अगेन वी हैव वन एक्स्ट्रा कंडीशन दैट दिस व्हील आल्सो मूव्स अलोंग इट्स सेंटर सो वी हैव हाफ देन आई इज द मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया एंड देन डी थीटा डी टी इज द एंगुलर वेलासिटी स्क्वायर ऑफ दैट इज बेसिकली द रोटेशनल कैनेटिक एनर्जी ना ऑब्वियसली आई इन दिस केस इज हाफ एम आर स्क्वायर आर इज द रेडियस ऑफ द व्हील एंड देन डी थीटा डी टी इज इक्वल टू वी कैन राइट डाउन वी बाई आर राइट नो इफ दैट इज द कंडीशन देन वी कैन राइट टोटल एनर्जी इन दिस केस इज हाफ एम वी स्क्वायर प्लस हाफ के एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस हाफ in place of i we write half m r square and then d theta dt we replace it by v by r whole square obviously we can simplify this expression what we'll have if you do that we'll have 3 by 4 m v square plus Half k x square. Now, again we apply the same condition. So total energy we differentiate that with respect to time and equate that to zero because there is no non-conservative force acting. Now, in this case, what we'll have three by four times. Twice m v, and then obviously d v d t plus half k x times there will be two d x d t, and this is uh, equal to zero. so what we have ultimately is uh, if we take v outside then inside we have 3 by 2 m and then in place of dv dt we can write d2x d t2 and then plus kx is equal to 0 so the equation of motion in this case we get equation of motion in this case is 3 by 2 m d2x dt2 plus kx is equal to 0 so what is the natural frequency or omega that we can derive so d2x dt2 plus twice k by Thrice m x is equal to zero, so that's the equation of motion. And what we have, omega square is equal to twice k by thrice m. So for this problem again, we use the concept of uh, energy conservation, and then using that condition, we have derived the equation of motion. and this clearly gives you an idea so if you have a structure then if you can uh, find out the total kinetic energy and potential energy using that information uh, we can uh, figure out what will be the equation of motion so in this case again uh, what will be the time period t is equal to 2 pi by omega so we can find out what is the natural frequency and corresponding time period so let us consider the third example so in this case what we have is uh 
uh, YouTube. This tube is partially filled with water. So, when the water does not move, that is the level. Now, just imagine the water moves inside this uh, tube. So, at one side, it has gone down by an amount of x. Obviously, on the other side, it will move up. by the same amount, right. Now, in this case, what we want to do? We want to derive the equation of motion for this fluid movement inside this U tube. Let us first uh, derive the equation and then I will discuss where uh, we apply this type of uh, device in structural engineering. Now, The kinetic energy in this case K will be half rho times A, A is the cross sectional area of the U tube and then uh, the total length of the fluid from this point to this point that is capital L. So, this is the total mass of the fluid and it is moving with the velocity V square. What is the potential energy in this case? U or you can write uh, E p. So, this is again rho a that is the mass per unit length times g is the mass times x is the volume of is the total mass moving and then times x. So, that is the potential energy. So, what is the total energy? Again it is the summation of these two. So, what we have half rho a l times v square plus rho a g times x square. Again, we follow the same strategy. So, differentiate this total energy with respect to time and equate it to 0. Obviously, in this case what we have half rho a l and then twice of v times dv dt plus rho a g twice x then dx dt. So, if we then simplify what we have V times rho A times then within third bracket we have L that is the total length of the fluid d 2 x d t 2 plus twice g times x is equal to 0. So, immediately what we get is the equation of motion. So, what we have in this case d 2 x d t 2 times L plus twice g x is equal to 0. Obviously, uh, we can uh, divide both sides by uh, capital L. So, we will get this is the equation of motion for this fluid moving inside the U tube. So, in this case what is the natural frequency? Omega square it is twice G by capital L and what is the time period? It is 2 pi by square root of L by 2 G. Now, again this example clearly tells us that uh, how we can use the energy principle to derive the equation of motion which is the starting point for any vibration analysis. The question is uh, before you conclude today where we use this kind of device recall uh, we have already de derived the equation of motion for a mass which is attached to a spring. Now, if this is the mass which is actually moving over this plane. So, this is the stiffness and this is the mass and it actually moves this direction by an amount x of t. Now, because of certain force or initial condition this uh, mass experiences some deformation. 
Now, what we can do, we can actually put a YouTube over it and then we can partially fill this YouTube with water. Now, without YouTube, what is the natural frequency of this uh, system? Say omega 1, let me uh, mark it, it is square root of k by m, right. And we have already derived what is W L that is for liquid inside the tube. So, we have square root of 2 G by L. Now, if by chance we equate these two, that means we design the length of the liquid inside the U tube in such a way that this condition is satisfied. That means W1 is equal to WL. This condition is satisfied. So, you exploit resonance. Then what will happen? This uh, liquid inside this tube will start vibrating and it will absorb a significant amount of energy from this uh, original mass block. And then because of that, this deformation x of t of the original mass that gets reduced. So, this is a kind of uh, vibration controller that we can design and in, in fact it is used as a vibration controller as a passive controller to a uh, structure to mitigate structural vibration. So, that is an application where we actually use this theory and uh, tune the column, we call it tuned liquid column damper. That damper is tuned in such a way that it absorbs energy from the parent structure and then thereby uh, it actually reduces the vibration of the parent structure. It has a uh, lot of applications, but the point is uh, we can use energy principle to derive the equation of motion for uh, either of the structure whether it is a U tube or it is a mass spring system. So, with that let us close here as we progress in this course. In the next week what we will see, we will consider a uh, portal frame and for that we will derive the equation of motion, we will apply D. Lambert's principle and derive the equation of motion and from that point onward we will start solving the response of the structure and then we will see how we can interpret the response and we can actually help uh, the design using that information. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.